Hello, my name is Dan Guerra and I'm Coltex Technical Manager. Today, I will be walking you through how to use the Coltec Stormwater Design Calculator. The Stormwater Design Calculator is a workable Excel workbook that allows the user to not only size a Coltec system for stormwater management, but also it helps them select the best chamber model and configuration for their site. So when you open up the workbook, it's going to take you to the Read Me tab, which is basically the instruction manual on how to use the tool. You're going to be able to find your different tabs down here. So it's always going to default to the Read Me tab. And if you're a new user, you're going to want to go ahead and read instructions. So once you've read the instructions and you kind of understand what you're doing and how to use the tool, you're going to go to your Input Information tab. So the first thing to do on the tab is fill out the project information. So this is your basic project name, location, et cetera. You're going to fill out the calculations were performed by this person. So if that's yourself or someone else in your office, that would get filled out. And if there's a Coltec project number, so if you're an engineer and you're currently working with Coltec technical team on a project and they've issued a Coltec project number, this would be entered right here. And obviously, if you're not working with Coltec directly, then there is no project number. So when using the design calculator, there's a few inputs that you're going to be looking for that are going to drive the output that the calculator generates. So number one is the unit of measure, right? So if you're using imperial units, you're going to use that. Otherwise, you're going to go down to metric. And you'll notice when we convert to metric units, everything on the spreadsheet automatically updates for metric. So we're going to go back to Imperial. So if you know the chamber model that you want to use, so we have models from eight and a half inches to 48 inches or 200 millimeters to 1200 millimeters. If you know the chamber model, then you're just going to go ahead and you're going to select that. If you don't know yet, like you don't know what's the difference between a, a field drain C4 and a recharger 902, you can click any of these links down here, and that'll link you to the information page for each product on the website, and you can look a little bit more. Or alternatively, what you can do is you're going to come down here to these two cells right here. So workable bed depth and maximum bed width, but primarily we're going to focus on workable bed depth. So your workable bed depth is the distance from finish grade, the vertical distance from finish grade to the invert of your chamber system. So the invert is going to be controlled by the outlet invert, right? So wherever you're tying into or the separation to generally something like your water table. So in this case here, let's say the user wants to use the Recharger 902. They're familiar with the product. And they have groundwater, let's say, is say, seven feet from finished grade, and their municipality requires a three-foot separation to groundwater. So seven minus three leaves four feet of workable depth. So the user is going to input that value, and you'll see a warning pops up. Okay, so this is what I said earlier, how the worksheet will actually help the user determine the best chamber model to use. So in this case here, what we're saying is, hey, if you only have four feet of usable depth or workable depth, this chamber is too tall. This chamber requires 6.75 feet. So you can either look at moving the system elsewhere on the site where you have more depth, which is unlikely for this example to gain that much depth. So what you would do is you would simply go to your next chamber model down. So the next model requires five feet of depth. You're just going to repeat the process until you find a model that works. So there we go. So the Recharger 280 is shallow enough that it works within your depth constraint. So that's a, a really critical thing to understand on this worksheet is how to use the workable bed depth input to determine the best chamber model to use. So we'll go back to the Recharger 902 and we'll just, you know, we'll just assume we have, you know, eight feet of depth to work with. So the next input you're going to want to put in is your storage volume required, obviously. So this sizing sheet 
or the sizing tool is intended to help the user size a cult tech system based on storage volume. So in this case, we're going to use 10,000 cubic feet was the default, but let's say we have a 25,000 cubic foot storage volume requirement. And then the last parameter that you can control is the maximum bed width. So maximum bed width would be, as an example, let's say your building is running north-south and you're going to put the Coltec system on the west side of the building and you have a sanitary line also running north-south parallel with the building. Let's say you have a, you know, 40 feet of clear space between the sanitary and the building that you can place the system. So you're going to enter that as your maximum bed width. If you don't have a maximum bed width, you can play around with this number and you'll see how it'll modify the design to suit what you're looking for. But in this case, we'll just pick a sort of arbitrary number, 40 feet. Um, stone porosity. Okay, this is typical. 40% is kind of the industry standard. If your municipality is looking for something lower, you're welcome to adjust that to whatever that value might be. And there's some more information again down here on our internal manifold system. But essentially, the internal manifold is how we distribute peak flows from the inlet throughout the chamber system. So generally, you can leave this at two internal manifolds unless for some reason you know you only have an inlet on one side of the system or something like that. Then you can use one internal manifold. And if you know you're going to use an external pipe manifold, then you're welcome to do that and you would simply use that drop down. So we kind of have all of our parameters filled out. I'm going to put this back to standard 40%. These values here are always just going to default, okay, to whatever that chamber model is. You're welcome to change them so the user can change that value to, you know, whatever you want. If you change it to something that is lower than the minimum, the worksheet is going to let you know. So if you said, hey, I can get away with six inches of bedding stone, it's going to tell you, no, you need nine inches. Okay, so with everything filled out, the last input, you may or may not know this at this stage, would be your stone base elevation. This is important only if you're looking for a stage storage report. If you're in the conceptual design phase, you might not know that yet. So if you know that value, this is where you would input it. So in this case, we'll just enter, you know, 100 feet above sea level. So with all the parameters filled out, we know we're looking for 25,000 cubic feet of storage. We want to use our Recharger 902 model. We're going to be using, let's say, two internal manifolds. This is our workable bed depth, and we want to try to keep it about 40 feet wide maximum. So when you're all set, you just go ahead and click Get Report. And it's going to bring you to the report sheet. And this is going to basically be the summary of the proposed chamber system. So right here is all of the storage. So as you can see, we were looking for 25,000 cubic feet. You generated a layout 25,105, so that works perfectly. This is kind of giving you the breakdown of storage. Is it in the chambers? It is in the stone or the manifold. This right here is a nice materials list. So if you're doing budget pricing or like keeping in mind, not all users are going to be engineers. It could be a distributor or a contractor can use this tool. So this will help generate a materials list that you can use to get a budget price. And then right down here, this information is your bed layout. So to achieve 25,000 cubic feet, the worksheet has generated a layout five rows of chambers wide. So this is just for reference. So there will be five rows of chambers and 49 chambers per row. And here's your bed dimensions and your total system area. So the length of the separator row, if we go back to the input sheet, there is a checkbox here to include a separator row or not. It's going to default as populated to include a separator row. There's more information on the separator row in our website, but essentially, it's a device with a, a row of chambers wrapped in geotextile to capture sediment. So back on the report page, 
basically this is our layout okay five rows 49 chambers per row here's our dimensions here's our vertical dimensions okay so we have the total bed depth we have the depth of stone the chamber height so all of the elevations are right here so they're referencing this cross section and the last piece of information you might be looking for is a stage storage report. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on that or you can navigate down here using the tabs. And so here's our storage, uh, stage storage report. So for every one inch increment or 25 millimeters, the spreadsheet has generated the storage volume, okay? So again, here's our total. And what we did is we have these notes here just as sort of a visual aid so you can see where the storage is. So this is our bedding stone. Here's the height of the chamber. And then this is the embedment stone. So this information can be exported. It can be included in stormwater management reports or narratives. It can be used to export into a computer model to run an analysis. So it can be used a number of different ways. So if we go back to the report, let's just say for whatever reason, you wanted the chamber system dimensions shorter in this case. So maybe we can actually go a little bit wider than 40 feet and the maximum length, let's say is 175 feet. So we're a little bit too long. So what you can do is mess around with this number here. This number can be modified to help end up with a length result that works for the site. So if we just do trial and error, we'll put that at 45 feet. So you see here, now we've added one additional chamber row and the bed is a little bit wider and less than the 175 feet that we were talking about. So the user can use this input right here to adjust the overall dimensions of the system. And it sometimes is trial and error, but essentially, this number would be modified. So again, if we wanted it wider, we could do 55 feet. And we're going to end up with a bed that's wider and shorter in length than we had before. And the separator row length is always going to be adjusted as the bed overall bed length is modified. So that's essentially how to use the calculator. So again, just to kind of reiterate some of these inputs here, when the user first begins working on this input sheet, they're gonna select their unit of measure. If they're already looking at a chamber model, they would select that from the dropdown. You're gonna enter your workable bed depth, your required stored volume, and your width constraint, your maximum bed width, or if you don't have a maximum, but you want to sort of control what the footprint is going to look like, for example, you want a rectangle instead of a square, you're going to use this input right here to do that. You're going to go ahead and click get report, and it's going to generate your materials list, your storage volume, and your bed layout. So what we'll do is we'll run one other quick example. So let's say all of these parameters remain the same, except the bed depth was six feet. Okay, so now everything looks good. Here's our storage, here's our maximum width, but we simply don't have enough depth. So we're going to go down to the next largest chamber, and that clears up all of our warnings. So this Recharger 360 works, and we'll generate the report. And again, the storage is a little bit more than required, which is perfect. All of our materials right here. And what you'll notice is a slightly larger footprint than the previous model, okay? So about 51 feet wide, the last um, 902 design was about 50 feet and about 182 feet long. So that's how you would modify the layout with a different chamber model. You'll notice also, that as the chamber model is updated, all of this sort of basic vertical cross-sectional information is also updated. So now we have a 36 inch chamber with the appropriate base and embedment stone, and also all of the center to center spacing, the chamber, all of the chamber dimensions are updated automatically.
So one last thing to show is, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, is that these values are critical. Okay, so the depth below, above, and between the chamber rows, we can kind of see that stuff here. So this spacing and the depth of stone above and below the chambers is critical for the structure of the system. So we don't ever want to use a value that is too low. So as I showed earlier, if you, if you do that, the spreadsheet will warn you. The other thing is sometimes you might modify, like we talked about, you know, you might want to modify this value. For example, if it's a retention detention system where you want infiltration storage below the chamber, you might want to increase this to 12 inches, 18 inches, whatever the number is. So in this case, let's just say it's 18 inches. So it's going to generate the report. You'll see that this A dimension, which is the stone below the chamber, is 18 inches. So now let's say you want to go back and, and you have to change something. Maybe this chamber model isn't what you were looking for. Maybe you need a bigger footprint, something like that. So what's important to note about the spreadsheet is as you change each chamber model from this dropdown, the default values of stone that, again, are very critical, automatically update. So let's say we're going to go to the Recharger 330XL. So see, these changed back to the default values for that chamber model. So it's really critical that we do that because we don't want to end up with too much stone or too little stone in these areas um, based on the chamber model. Thank you for taking the time to review this instructional video. We appreciate you designing with our Coltex stormwater chambers. If at any time you have questions or need some guidance, please feel free to reach out to our technical department via phone at 203-775-4416 or email at tech at caltech.com.